Welcome to the Power of Food podcast. We are so excited to bring you evidence-based nutrition information focusing on addressing the root cause for imbalance. Food has the power to help you achieve lifelong optimal health without the side effects of prescription medication. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, or any other podcast platform. I am Stacy Seslowski, Functional Nutrition Registered Dietitian. And I am Leah Grace Barrick, Functional Nutritionist. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Power of Food podcast. Leah and Stacy here with a special guest, Dr. Mark Grossman, who is a holistic eye doctor. And he has a fascinating approach to eye care, which we're going to talk all about today. So let's just jump right in. Dr. Grossman, do you mind just giving a really quick intro on who you are and your practice? And then we'll jump into our questions. Sure. Um <clears throat> So uh, I've been a eye doctor optometrist for over 40 years in practice. I've also been an acupuncturist for over 28 years. And my goal is that vision is not static, that vision at any age can be improved. And in your little intro, when I saw the power of food, I said, oh my goodness, I'm in the right place because I'm always talking about the team approach to eye care. And... Um, <clears throat> Even my books, I've written five books on the subject. My latest book is called Natural Eye Care. It's 800 pages, 2,000 peer review references on um, how to take care of different eye conditions and eye diseases through nutrition, through exercise, uh, through uh, herbs, through essential oils, through yoga. So we incorporated all those into this book. Uh, it's also being the anti-salesman. I am available on Amazon as a $10 uh, Kindle, so you don't have to carry the five-pound book. Um, I lecture on this nationally and internationally to both acupuncturists, lay people, and uh, practitioners. Um, I've improved my own eyesight from legally blind to being able to pass a driver's test and being able to read without glasses, which we'll go into in the future. And um, yeah, I just love eyes. I love telling people about seeing, about vision. Vision is the dominant sense modality. Embryologically, physiologically, neurologically, the eye is brain tissue. If you can change your mind, you can change your eyes. So. Again, how we see the world, how the world sees us is so important. So um, thank you for having me. And we will talk about nutrition, supplementation, lifestyle changes. We are going to put the power back into the uh, patient and not giving over the power to the practitioner. So uh, let's, let's begin. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we love that upstream approach, you know, in functional medicine, looking at the why before we started, you were talking a bit about you go to any other doctor. And if you're getting worse, every time you go, there's a problem with that. Whereas if you go to the eye doctor, every year, they up your prescription a little bit and basically tell you, oh, there's nothing you can do, you know, it's just going to get worse. And so your approach to actually helping people improve their vision, improve whatever eye problems are going on through using food through using using lifestyle practices is amazing. Um, so you talked a little bit about your practice philosophy. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how you started with the holistic approach, just briefly, you know, growing up, that kind of thing would be really interesting for our audience. Okay. So as I said to Stacy earlier, I grew up in Queens, New York, and my dad was an accountant and 90% of accounts are nearsighted. And why? Because they look up close all day. Less than 10% of farmers are nearsighted because they look on the horizon. <clears throat> I went to a um, math and science high school in New York City called Stuyvesant High School. 90% of us were nearsighted. Less than 10% of juvenile delinquents are nearsighted. Why? Because function affects structure. If you're going to use your eyes up close all day, something has to give. That's why today, 80 to 90% of children 14 and under in Japan and China are nearsighted. If that's not an epidemic, 90%, nothing is. Why, as we talk about functional medicine, 
Why? Because they're starting on digital devices at three years old. They're looking up close at three years old. The eye muscles are not ready for that. You know, if you're going to be the average person today is on digital devices and their computers and phones almost 10 to 12 hours a day. They're asking their eyes to run a marathon. If you're going to run a marathon, and I've run marathons, you've got to train. If you're just going to be on a digital device for that much of a time, something has to give. And what gives? Your vision. You become more nearsighted, astigmatism, eyes get dry. They've even shown a relationship between excessive computer use and glaucoma. <clears throat> so again, what we're talking about in the word functional medicine Function affects structure. And like I said, carry 50 pounds of rice on your back and you'll be tilted over. <laughs> Look up devices. So <clears throat> growing up, I was always interested in Eastern philosophy. But, you know, naturopathic medicine wasn't around. Acupuncture wasn't around. And um, so I went to high school and I went to college and I was a chemistry biology major. And then I... <clears throat> I was actually, I was on the basketball team and I was getting my ankle taped. And I said to the trainer that year, I said, what are you doing next year? He was a senior. He goes, I'm going to go to optometry school. You make enough money. You don't make a lot of money, but nobody dies on you. I said, <laughs> I said, I like that. He goes, but you got to be good in math and science. I go, I can do that. I'm good in math and science and nobody dies on you. I think I like this. <laughs> so I went to, I went to optometry school and I didn't, think about holistic this, holistic that. I just thought I'd prescribe glasses or contacts. But then <clears throat> I started reading Zen and the Motorcycle Maintenance, Alas Castaneda, all these interesting books about uh, Eastern philosophy. And um, they, in the school that I went to, they did a thing called vision therapy, which is eye exercises uh, to help you know, remediate eye conditions. <clears throat> And when I got out of school, I went, I went directly into vision therapy. I had some great mentors. And one of my mentors was a yogi. His name was Dr. Al Shankman in Connecticut. And he studied yoga and he had a yoga-based philosophy of vision care. And I became his patient for two years. And, uh, and then I said, then, I, then 18 years later, when acupuncture got licensed in New York State, I felt the urge to go to acupuncture school. And I went to acupuncture school. I changed my whole philosophy of vision care, which is in Western medicine, how does X cause Y? And in Chinese medicine, what is the relationship between X and Y? <clears throat> and I believe that all disease, dis-ease in the body-mind has to do with relationships climate change, the environment, where you live, your relationships to your family, to your pets, if you have pets, to your neighbors, to the foods you eat, when you eat it, how you eat it, um, relationships on all levels. And that is the basis of Chinese medicine. When you have a, an imbalance in relationship, that is where the stuck energy comes from. <clears throat> And as functional medicine practitioners, you know, when you have problems in the gut and digestive system, in the microbiome, it can affect the eye and the ocular microbiome. So there's so much relationship between functional medicine and functional vision care. So, uh, you know, it's just like, this is how I'm going to live my life. I wanna live this way. How can I not practice this way? You know, if I'm going to to live a life of of believing in functional medicine, believing in exercise, meditation, uh, these kind of things, then even if 99% of eye doctors are just going to give the medication or the drug or the nearsightedness, I, I would be in spiritual conflict with myself to practice that way. So I didn't have really much of a choice. And that's why after 40 years, I'm still excited about what I do, because I'm just what I'm doing is just a representation of who I am. And people who go into functional medicine, like both of you, I know 
without even knowing you well, that it has to be an outgrowth of who you are or you wouldn't be doing it. I love your passion about it and I share it. I really I feel the same exact way about the way that systems are connected and that and asking why, you know, why are these things happening? And we even talked about before that, like, you know, you go to the doctor and they tell you, you know, you need a statin or you need this and they sort of just do these, you know, approaches. But why is this happening? We don't have to just allow it. We can sort of ask those questions and and figure out what are the underlying causes. So that my next question is, what are some of the underlying causes for diminishing eyesight over time? Yeah, so let's let's backtrack a little bit because, you know, and we'll get into that. But again, the public, if they know that there's a why, they want to know why. And right now they're asking the why, but they're not getting the answers from their practitioners. <clears throat> That's why I believe in a team approach. So as I, we said before, <clears throat> you go to the eye doctor, and if any of you are listening to this podcast, and if you ever had early cataracts, what I'm about to say is something I'm sure you've experienced. As eye doctors, we look in the eye and we go, oh, you got the beginnings of a cataract. Not Cadillac, cataract. <laughs> cataract means waterfall. So it means a little bit of cloudiness in the lens of your eye. <clears throat> And you say to the eye doctor tells you that, and you say to the eye doctor, uh, oh, I got the beginnings of a cataract. Um, what can I do about it? And they say, oh, no, no, nothing you can do about it. We'll watch it. Come back in six months or a year. And if it gets worse, then we'll do an operation. <clears throat> so you leave the eye doctor's office. Next time you go, they go, oh, you've got a little bit of, of high eye pressure. You are... A glaucoma suspect. You're a glaucoma suspect. Oh my God, my eye pressure is a little high. Uh, doctor, doctor, what can I do? <clears throat> and the doctor says, well, you know, we'll watch that also. And if the pressure gets high or your optic nerve gets affected, then we'll give you medication or surgery to lower the pressure. <clears throat> is there anything I can do while you're watching it? Nah, nah, nothing you can do while you're watching it. Uh, doctor, doctor, you go to the internist. Oh, you've got a little bit of uh, high blood pressure or a little plaque in your arteries. Um, you know, is there anything I can, uh, you know, is there anything I can do about that? Doctor says, no, nah, right now we'll watch that too. Maybe we'll put you on a statin or, you know, eventually maybe we will need a stent or a bypass. Is there anything I can do while you're watching it? Nah, nah. So, you're powerless, you're helpless. You know, it's like, I'm just gonna wait for my body to deteriorate and just get diseased. Even though, like I said, Dean Ornish published a definitive study that yoga, meditation, diet, nutrition can reverse heart disease. And I've got 2000 peer review references that show there are things to help reverse cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration. Yes, there are things you can do while you're watching it. And that's where functional medicine comes into play. <clears throat> Cataracts, always usually low in glutathione. Glutathione, a major antioxidant. The NIH did a 4,600 person study on the role of antioxidants in cataracts and macular degeneration and showed a relationship. And what happened? Pharmaceutical companies came out with Ocuvite and uh, her preservation. So now eye doctors are saying, yeah, here, here, according to the average study, yeah, some, some antioxidants can help with this. So now doctors are saying, yeah, nutrition can help, but look into those things and you see red dye number three, red dye number four. You know, it's like the things in it are fine, but do we have to have the, the dyes in there? But what it tells you is that every doctor today in our own literature is believing that nutrition can have an effect. So build glutathione levels through whether it's through supplementation with glutathione and N-acetylcysteine and alpha lipoic acid. Uh, do it through foods, through garlic, onions. Uh, there's a lot of different foods that it can be uh, help build glutathione levels. Um, vitamin C, selenium. 
So if I'm looking at cataracts, I want to build glutathione levels. I have homeopathic eye drops scenario. This homeopathic eye drop has been in the PDR, the Physician's Desk Reference of Ophthalmology, for over 40 years. They talk about this homeopathic remedy scenario that is helpful for early cataracts in 22.5% of the cases. They didn't tell me that when I was in school, I was working in a hospital and one of the other doctors was looking through the PDR and said, look at this. There's something for early cataracts that they never told us about. Uh, and a scene helps break up glycation. Glycation is when the sugar proteins in the lens start glycating, coming together so that the light can't get through. So there's some nutritional eye drops, homeopathic eye drops to help with cataracts. <clears throat> Glaucoma, macular degeneration, the carotenoids, very, very important. Almost every person with macular degeneration is shown to be uh, low in the carotenoids of lutein, zeaxanthin, mesozeaxanthin, astaxanthin, all these different carotenoids that are important for the macula. <clears throat> and what foods are important for the macula? Kale, number one food for the eyes, orange peppers, collard greens, spinach, uh, tomatoes for lycopene. So food, and the, the, especially the green leafies, super important. The dark grapes, uh, the uh, dark blueberries, super important for your eyesight, for the blood vessel walls. I believe that almost every chronic eye disease is from one of three or four reasons or a combination of inflammation, oxidative stress, circulation. Oh, sounds like many of the things that could create heart disease, many of the things that could create, uh, you know, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's disease. You know, as I said earlier, embryologically, physiologically, neurologically, the eye is brain tissue. Why? There's a big relationship between the eye and the brain. My business partner on my website, Natural Eye Care, just wrote a book on natural ways to natural ways to work with the brain. You might want to interview him also because when we were doing the Natural Eye Care book, we saw that almost almost so many of the same nutrients are good for the brain. You know, makes sense, and. Functional practitioner, the gut-brain connection. You know, we're not going to look at the brain separate from the gut. You know, this is our inner brain. So again, it all relates, you know. So, so you know, we have to put, as you talked about with your patients, we want to take them on the journey together. We want them to be participants in their own healing modalities. We want them to not give over their power to us and say, just give me a pill and make it better or just take out my cataract and that makes it better because it'll come back somewhere else in your body if the underlying reason isn't mm -hmm. taken care of. Oh, exactly. I took out the cataract. Oh, but next year I've got something else going on. Oh, they didn't tell me there was a relationship between those things. Yeah. <laughs> but... You know, it just makes it just makes so much sense in logic, and you know, and I'm speaking with you, and you're educating the public on this, which is fantastic. But you know, every you know, it's like the other things that we need to do is not only educate our clients, but have them say, now you've got the power and the knowledge. Now you educate and you tell people, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> that's how it spreads. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Everything you said is so spot on and using food as medicine and, you know, really getting to the root cause. And I love that you said, you know, even if you fix, you know, the macular degeneration, it's going to show up somewhere else in the body because all of our systems are connected. And if you have an imbalance, it might be presenting in the eyes, but unless you get to the root cause, it's never truly going to heal and recover and come back into balance. So that's beautiful. Um, I would love to hear what lifestyle tips you usually give to your clients. I know we talked a bit about blood flow, increasing blood flow, how that can really help improve eye health, but I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about what you typically recommend to your patients to do or anything to avoid in terms of lifestyle interventions. So 
you know, due to this epidemic of the digital world due to COVID and the fact that many, many people are on their devices even more than ever, um, with my colleague, Daniel Lansky, I developed a program called Advanced Vision Support, which is a series of eye exercises, yoga exercises, and uh, breathing exercises to help relieve the strain while you're on the computer. <clears throat> also, just warm compresses. We have eye masks that you can put over your eyes to increase the circulation around your eyes. And this will hit all these really great uh, acupuncture points. <clears throat> uh, uh, circulation, aerobic exercise, you know, at least aerobic exercise four times a week, at least 20 minutes a day will actually reduce eye pressure. So I tell people, you know, to try to get on some sort of exercise program, move, stop being sedentary, uh, go for walks, get outside. Don't be NDD, nature deficit disorder, you know, get out in nature, relax your focus. Um, so exercise, I mean, I meditate every morning, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes and then I exercise. So get the blood circulating, get your eye circulating. Um, yeah, and just be, <clears throat> be aware, be conscious. I mean, I'm sure you talk about this as functional medicine practitioners. Be conscious of when you're eating, what you're eating, why you're eating, <laughs> you know? Okay, I need to eat, I need some comfort foods. I'm sitting here with my ice cream, you know? All right, so you, at least you know why you're doing it. <laughs> you know, bring it to an awareness level. Uh, but, but I always exercise. If you smoke, stop smoking. It, it increases macular degeneration and glaucoma over 205%. I mean, it'll narrow the blood vessel walls. It'll deplete you in B vitamins. So, you know, if you, can, if you do smoke, try to quit. And, you know, take care of yourself, self-care. Take Epsom salt baths at night. Uh, relax those muscles. Put a little essential oils in there. Pay yourself first. Many of us are caregivers and caretakers, but we can't take care of others if we don't take care of ourselves. So, so really look for balance, look for harmony in your life, whether it's exercise, meditation, uh, communication, um, and just awareness. I mean, that's, that's, that's the big part. Yeah, it's just this mind body, you know, it's like we, we have control of, you know, and, and it's what's also interesting is that these signs that we have, like the macular de degeneration or the cataracts, like these are the symptoms that your body is giving you to tell you that something is off. So it's like we have to listen to these, you know, symptoms and listen to our body and then, you know, really take action. Um, you know, you've mentioned a couple of times that the eyes are a window into the brain. And then another thing that you mentioned that I think is so interesting is also the 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 connection between the, the microbiome. You know, I, I've often heard of you, you always hear about the gut microbiome and you even hear about the mouth microbiome and the nose sometimes, but I've never uh, honestly like really thought about the microbiome, the ocular micro microbiome like you mentioned. I think that is just so interesting. If you might like talk about that connection, the brain connection and the gut connection. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear your answer to that. Oh, okay. Oh, boy, I said so many things that stimulated me. So let me just think about it. <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> Well, let me talk about the, the biomes for a second and then we'll, I'll, I'll back because that. <clears throat> so in Chinese medicine, the eyelids, the lower eyelids and the upper eyelids are the stomach spleens, the earth element. Earth element in Chinese medicine is about digestion. It's about nourishment. When you have these kind of things and that, <clears throat> oh, that was the beautiful thing you said. The beautiful thing you said was signals. The eye is giving you signals. Your gut is giving you signals. When you have dry eye, when you have itchy eyes, it's giving you signals. When you have a cataract, it's giving you a signal. 
it's your wake up call <clears throat> that there is an imbalance somewhere and now it's affecting your eye. So the eye in Chinese medicine uh, is also the uh, windows to the soul, as Shakespeare said. It's the Shen, it's the spirit, it's the pilot light. So it's not only, uh, you know, the, you know, embryologically, physiologically, neurologically brain tissue, but it is in, in your soul. It's your soul's expression of how you see the world. So that's on a whole other level. But in terms of the biome, that's why the, the tear film is made of the omega-3 fatty acids. You know, if we eat too much sugar, our eyes tend to dry out. The mybobian glands, they tend to close up. So we have like this whole inner, inner world in the eye, in the vitreous. Vitreous is made of hyaluronic acid. So, hmm, hyaluronic acid, very interesting. Oh, it's an anti-inflammatory. Oh, interesting. I have problems with my joints and I'm also getting more floaters now because mm -hmm. there's more stuck energy in the uh, vitreous of the eye. So we start looking at what are the uh, component parts nutritionally and embryo uh, of the different parts of the eye from vitamin C. The highest concentration in vitamin C in the body is in the adrenal glands, but where's the second highest? In the lens of the eye. Very interesting. In Chinese medicine, the kidney meridian, adrenal meridian, controls the focusing system. Aha. Uh -huh. Again, very interesting. And you start to look at cataracts, and when people are developing cataracts, they're low in vitamin C in their aqueous humor. So we got to talk about diet. We got to talk about supplementation. So we're looking again, we're looking at the whole. And we're looking at the relationships. So I just love the fact <clears throat> that you're talking about the signal. This, you know, this is your wake up call to, to taking, to empowering yourself to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. So interesting about the vitamin C. I knew about the adrenals, but I had no idea the eyes were the second highest. So that makes so much sense, right? With like oxidative stress and needing the vitamin C as an antioxidant to help prevent that. So that's really fascinating. Um, I would love Dr. Grossman, if you would mind, um, if you wouldn't mind demonstrating for us a couple of your favorite one or two eye exercises. I know that you said with your partner, you've created a whole library on your website, but just for our listeners or watchers to kind of see. Um, and then also I was wondering when you do this, if you are someone who wears contacts or wears glasses, are you supposed to do them with or without the glasses or the contacts to help strengthen the eye? Because I would think you would want to do it without, but I really have no idea. So I would love if you wouldn't mind before we go, just touching on that. Okay. So I'll show you three of my favorites, okay. but for your listeners and yourselves uh, on naturaleyecare.com, or I could send it directly to you a link. I have a whole eye exercise booklet that people can have for free that goes through my 10 or 12 favorite eye exercises and acupressure exercises. So I can <clears throat> send you that link or it's on naturaleyecare.com. We have a free newsletter and we have free eye exercises. Uh, in terms of contact glasses, et cetera, et cetera, <clears throat> sometimes it's, it's good to do them in different ways because the goal of any eye exercises is flexibility and adaptability. Depending on the prescription that the person has, they, they might be so blurry when they take off their contacts or glasses that you know they, they don't even feel they can do anything. So, so they might need to put them on. But <clears throat> the following exercises can be done with your, uh, with your glasses, with your contacts, or without. Usually if I have to choose one of the three, I say without glasses or contacts. <clears throat> and so these exercises, there's also a free eye exercise video on my website, naturaleyecare.com. So the first one is very, very easy, <clears throat> very simple. You rub your hands together, building up the energy in your hands, the warmth. And you close your eyes gently and you make a little cup, like a cup here. 
so that you can maybe put like a half an ounce of water in it, just so that it's a little cup and you put it over your orbital, uh, over your eye, and then you cover it the other way. Sometimes you'll see it like this. I like it like this or like this because it'll block out more light this way. So sometimes you'll see this exercise is called palming, but I like it like this. And your eyes are gently closed. And sometimes you're at a desk and you're relaxing your neck and you just breathe into the blackness. And it'll just relax your eyes. And it'll just, you know, just, and when you're, when you're palming, it's called palming, you're touching and tonifying all these different acupressure points around the eyes. So palming was, I don't know if it was originated by him, but it came to um, being popular in the 1920s by an ophthalmologist called Bates. Bates was an ophthalmologist who made up a system called the Bates Method for vision improvement. And there's a lots of natural vision educators around the world who do the Bates method. In fact, we just came up with a, uh, a documentary called Insight to Your Eyesight on the Bates method. And there's a whole bunch of vision educators around the world who will teach people these eye exercises. So palming is, is one of my favorites, especially if you're on the computer all day long. Next <clears throat> is figure eights. You just imagine, we'll just do the simple one, like a horizontal infinity sign in front of you, like a figure eight. So you're just stretching your eyes all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And you're making this like eight. And you can also do it horizontally, you could do it vertically, so that you're stretching the, all the extra ocular muscles vertically, and horizontally. And if you want to take it to another level, you do it like a clock. You do 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock, 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock, 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, 4 to 10, 5 to 11, and then you go around the clock clockwise and counterclockwise. When you do this, and I tell people to do it for like breaths, like do it for 5 or 10 breaths, you're hitting all, as I said, all the extraocular muscles, the superior rectus, the inferior rectus, the lateral rectus, the inferior and superior oblique muscles. So you're getting them more flexible and adaptable. You're sort of stretching them before you work out. <clears throat> and one of my favorites, and some patients can do this and some of your clients may not, but this is called the hot dog. And this is great for parties, or if you have nothing to say, you want to say to somebody, <laughs> but you take your two fingers, you hold them about six to eight inches in front of your face, and you look across the room. And as you look across the room, a little extra finger will float between your two fingers. Either one of the fingers will elongate, but it'll look like a little mini hot dog. And if you wiggle your fingers, it'll dance. So we call this the hot dog. And the exercise is once you get the hot dog, you keep it for a count of two breaths. And then you look right at your fingers and get rid of the hot dog. And then look across the room again and get the hot dog. <clears throat> so again, on my website, naturaleyecare.com, you'll see that exercise. And we also like, we're able to put a little hot dog in there so you can actually see what it would look like. <laughs> That's so, amazing. So the, it was it's hard for me to watch you do these things and not want to try it. <laughs> yeah, try it, try it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to. And um, yeah, what I'm if thinking about too is that these are these are great ways also to like you know people have sort of a a, 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 a funny reaction when I ask people to meditate. You know, some people will say. Oh, Oh, that's not for me. I, I just I can't clear my mind that way. I can't sit without thinking. And I think doing some of these exercises is sort of a good opportunity to like distract your mind a little bit. So it's almost like meditation. And you know, for people where that are that they're struggling to meditate, I feel like this would be a good option for them. Yeah, the other super option if they can get the hot dog in one of my books, the Magic Eye books, improve your uh, magic off. Magic Eye Beyond 3D, Improve Your Vision. Um, 
I did studies on the fact that when you do like the hot dog or you do those 3D pictures, you're putting your brain in the same brainwave patterns as meditation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going into alpha rhythms. So yes, the eye exercises are a sneaky way to learn to meditate because yes. it's, getting you, it's getting you out of, you know, it's about one pointness of consciousness. It's about relaxing your eye and your mind. So those mm -hmm. 3D pictures is another way of doing it. And the palming also. In yoga practices, at the end of yoga, they'll go, Shavasana, and they'll say, mm -hmm. palm your eyes and lie down, and then that'll just relax your eyes. So, um, <clears throat> you know, the eye exercises are just, again, ways that have many more uh, attributes besides just um, improving your eyes. You know, they'll, they'll relax your eyes and your mind. And um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I have much, learned, Dr. I'm Grossman. sure we both have learned yeah. so much. Yeah. It's been amazing. <laughs> I mean, the nutrition, the strengthening the eyes, empowering patients, all of that, that, you know, Stacy and I talk about all the time. It's been really fascinating to look at from an eye care perspective because we are all connected. And so, you know, when things turn up in our eyes, looking at what's the root cause and how you do that in your practice was so interesting to learn about. So thank you so much for your time. I'm definitely going to listen to this again, and I'm sure Stacy will too, and we'll have some new things to share with our clients as well. And just, just so people know, uh, <clears throat> thank you so much for the opportunity to share what I do. And, and now, um, <clears throat> you know, if people, again, I've, I've worked with people in Russia, Japan, Australia, New Zealand. So if I, wherever you are, I might know people in your area to refer you to, or these days I do a lot of telemedicine uh, once I see the records. So it's, you know, it's again, putting your team together. And I'm sure, you know, both of you, you're one of them, you're in Portland, right? I am, and yeah. You're in Florida. So again, you know, with technology today, the good part is now we can work with people all over. We're just not limited to working with people in our, <clears throat> in our just little things. So what I would like to talk about, if, if you're open to it, and I'll speak to my business partner, um, you know, we want to get you as part of our team of people to refer to because because we want we're always looking, you know, that's why I said people have to put their team together. So whether they're in Florida or Portland or whatever, uh, we're always looking to uh, improve the network. So thank you once again yeah. for your for the opportunity to talk to your people and anywhere I can be of help, let me know. Thank you so much. Um, did you want to just repeat one more time your website and where people can find you? I don't know if you're on social media or email, whatever you um, want to say. So the, I have three different websites. One is naturaleyecare.com. That's the one that goes through nutrition, education, and nutritional protocols for over 36 different eye diseases. We do free phone consultations with my partner, Michael Edson. Uh, I do consultations, but if I have to review the records, I, I do charge a fee for that service, even though sometimes today telemedicine might pay part of it. Uh, but that, that website has free newsletters uh, and free eye exercises and lots of education. Uh, the other website called Advanced Vision Support is the, um, the yoga vision and eye exercise um, website, which has a download of eye exercises, yoga and breathing exercises for working on the computer. That's advancedvisionsupport.com. <clears throat> and my other website, drgrossman2020.com is an educational website, which has lots of my articles and uh, consultations and free videos on uh, lots of the things that I've done uh, and podcasts that I've done. So those are the three websites um, that I have. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. And Amazon has all my books, you know, if you go on Amazon, uh, whether it's uh, the Natural Eye Care book or the Magic Eye books, 
and my book, Greater Vision, that goes into the physical, emotional, and spiritual aspects of vision care. So thank you again for uh, help letting me share my work with you, and uh, great to meet you. You too. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much again. Yeah. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye.